He knows what your darkest fear is. And that's how he kind of manifests. Whoa. Oh, that just gave me the chills. I, I went to step through the doorway and it was just like in my face. What was that? Did you hear that? It sounded like humming. Did you yeah, hear that? I, I heard that up here. It feeds off of fear. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The more afraid you are, the more it's going to come to you. What was that? What the f***? Hello? Carla, so we are here in the historic and haunted Twin City Opera House here in McConnellsville, Ohio. What can you uh, tell me about the location? It, uh, this building, the uh, building itself was built in 1892. It first opened May 28, 1892 as the Opera House. And even though that, that may sound old, it's actually the newest building on the square. So what can you tell me about as far as the history of it coming up over the years as an opera house. It's called Twin Cities because McConnellsville and Malta are right across the river from each other. And if, if you know anyone in McConnellsville, then of course you know everyone in, in Malta too. So they call it the Twin Cities. Up in, this is called an echo dome, the way that it's built so that any small voice or sound from the stage can be heard in all of the chairs. I mean, you can whisper that's why a lot of people, when they investigate up in the, the catwalk, they can't have anyone down here doing anything or even in the balcony because any little whisper you pick up on recordings because it's called an echo dome. I can tell you a couple of the, one of the very first experiences I ever had was right here in this room. Eric was showing uh, a video, movie video that he had done about the opera house and I was sitting uh, next to the last row and the wall sconces around the room are on dimmers but the dimmer switch is in the movie room up off of the balcony there's no other way to to dim these lights there, at the time there wasn't and we were sitting there and the lights came up i mean full on and then they creeped back down and then up down up and then they creeped back down real slow i looked at eric and i said go figure out who is messing with us. <laughs> and no one, no one was up there. So that could possibly be maybe residual because I bet the sconce has probably been here for quite some time. Well, these are not the original sconces, but at the time, the antique sconces that they took down and put back up for these, yeah, those were the ones that were there. There is uh, the one spirit here that I like the best would be Victoria. Uh, the stories of Victoria are that she was a a singer who had an affair with one of the stage people. He was a married man, and through their relationship, they had a child. And the child used to watch her on the stage, and the child's name was Elizabeth. Okay. And Victoria, if she wants to be heard, if she wanted to be heard right now, she could be heard. If she lets herself be known, you'll always hear her from the stage. Hmm. Usually when people are in the catwalk, you'll hear, <laughs> We have a guy in our group, his name is Marty. And Marty, I was walking over here beside him and he stopped and he was like, whoa. 
And I'm like, what? And he goes, did you see her? Did you see that? I said, no. And he said, someone just walked around that curtain. And he said, the way he described it was like a shimmer. He said, but it was a person. It was a full body person shimmer that just went right around the curtain. This area up here is where we have a lot of activity. The activity that we get would be Robert, who is um, reported to be the married man that Victoria had an affair with, and their daughter, Elizabeth. When they first started doing investigations and everything here, they, they encountered a child. And one of the EVPs they got from this child, and it's a class A EVP, it's very clear, she says, I forgive. In a, just a little child's voice, I forgive. It's, it just, it gives you chills. And we're talking and just, you know, where are we gonna go next and all this stuff. And so it, about five minutes later, she picked her recorder up and then went on. She was reviewing all of her evidence afterwards. And while we were talking down in the Steve? lobby area. Hmm? Was that Steve down there? Steve. Mm -hmm. Did you make a noise down there? I did not. She was reviewing all of her evidence afterwards. And she was reviewing all of her evidence afterwards. And. Yeah, there was a, did you hear that? It sounded like movement or something down there. No, I didn't hear it. Yeah, there's something down on the stage. No, but I got a chill coming up the back of my neck and that yeah. usually is a good sign. <laughs> One of my best, ex well, the very first time I was ever up here, there is an entity named Charlie. I have seen full grown men come charging up out of the basement before because this thing is just, he scares me. I mean, just talking about him right now, my heart's beating faster. <laughs> Whenever he comes up here, everybody else disappears as far as spirits are concerned. But the very first night I ever came up here, I was standing on the edge, kind of at the end of this over there I was holding a male meter. I, I had no experience with equipment or anything at all. This was 10 years ago. And I just, I felt horrible. I felt sad. I felt scared. Um, I, I can't even explain it. It just gloom. And the male meter that I was holding spiked to like nine and then 16. And as I looked up, makes my heart beat fast talking about it. There, you could see coming across the catwalk, it was just black and it was huge. Just filled the entire catwalk and it stopped about this far away and it was just kind of undulating, moving. And I was looking at this thing and I, I couldn't even say anything and then he was gone. However he does it, I don't know how he does it. My heart is beating so fast right now, I kind of want out of here, but he knows what your darkest fear is. Mine can be different from yours, from anybody's. Whatever your darkest fear is, he's able to plug into that, and that's how he kind of manifests. Watch your step. These, are, these steps are not all the same size, so. When you step down one, the next one is even lower, so be careful. Okay. This is the basement. Um, there may be bats down here, I'm not sure. I don't really like the basement. <laughs> I usually just come watch it step right inside the door. I've never really been over there. I don't like that corner. <laughs> Eric went over there one time and something put him on his back. I watched it happen. The guy kept saying, I'm drawn over here. You know, what was over here? And I let him go. And from about here, all you can see are legs. And they're both standing there. And I thought it was the guy that was with him. He just started going backwards and got about here and just boom, fell to the ground, just like a plank. And it was Eric. But do you think whatever put Eric on his back, do you think that was a negative entity? Yes. 
it feeds off of fear. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The more afraid you are, the more it's going to come to you. This over here, <laughs> I don't like to go in there. That room over there would have been the coat room. They've got all of the air conditioning and stuff in there now, and it's hard to, hard to get around, but that in there is where the doorway was. Right directly behind, there's a staircase that goes up to the clock tower. Um, never been up there. Not gonna go up there now, you're welcome to, because uh, there's something up there that's evil. And I think one of the first times you were ever here, I don't know, I may have told y'all, I went to step through the doorway and it was just like in my face, just right there. And I was like, no. Up in the clock tower. Or, through, just right, right through there, the doorway. Okay. Evil, evil. I don't think it's ever been a person, whatever it is. Yeah, definitely contributes to, I mean, it sounds like a mix, a good mix of both. I mean, residual and intelligent and maybe some even stranger things beyond that, like what you whatever said. Whatever is strange is in there. I know whenever Jack Osborne was here, he didn't like that either. And he, and you can hear too, it sounds like someone running up behind him. And the more people in it at a time, because it's used to the people and it's used to the activity and the drama, um, it will come alive better.
right, so it's Ryan and Jason. We're going down to the basement here underneath the Twin City Opera House. This is an area where they report a lot of dark and negative energy. We're going to go down here and perform the Estes method where the spirit box will be running and Jason will be live listening to it, unable to hear the questions that I'm asking, only being able to hear the answers that he's receiving through the spirit box. And we're going to try and communicate with these dark spirits that have reportedly attacked people down here. So it is dark, dark down here. I'm just setting this up here for the record while Steve and I are getting ready because we have some weird vibes going on with that stairwell right there. So we're just going to set that there momentarily. It's right here at the top of the steps. What's that? Yeah, that's where I was going Sure. Somebody's in here with us. Absolutely. Let me know when you're ready, Jason. Let me know when you're ready. Okay, one second. Okay. <clears throat> All right, I'm ready. Okay. So we came down here today. We're down here tonight, just Jason and I. We came down here to talk to whoever attacks people down here. Can you tell us what your name is? Now both Dave and I at two different times felt something interesting with the stairwell over here. If there's anyone downstairs or up here, could you maybe stand at the top of the steps for us? There's a device right there. It's got a little red light on it. It will not hurt you. But it will help us know that you're here. Would you please do that? Now it's been said that there's an entity that can manifest and use your darkest fears or use your biggest fears against you. He knows what your darkest fear is. Mine can be different from yours, from anybody's. Whatever your darkest fear is, he's able to plug into that and that's how he kind of manifests. If that's true, What are our darkest fears? We were just down on the street and saw uh, one of the cops drive by. I think he's out of the area now. So you guys want to party loud and have a good time, go right ahead. You won't be around to hear all the noise and you guys won't get in trouble that way. You won't be around to hear all the noise and you guys won't get in trouble that way. You won't be around to hear all the noise and you guys won't get in trouble that way. What if I stepped away a little bit? Does that make you feel a little bit more comfortable? There's another device right there on the uh, step. If you stand close to it, it might let us know that you're, uh, you're doing so. We heard that there was a gentleman stabbed to death up here. Are you here with us? My name is Ryan, that's Jason over there. Jason has a box in his hands that you can use to answer us. If you walk over there by him and talk, we should be able to hear you. Come on.
If there's anyone down here, you can use our energy to talk. Just come up to us and try your hardest to communicate. If you'd like. What are you thinking so far? I don't know. We both felt kind of apprehensive coming up here, coming up the stairwell. We had that one little blip on the EDI. Just feels like a like an overabundance of silence. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Can you close that door to the top of the steps? Sounded like a male tried to come through, but <clears throat> inaudible. Who's the man's voice? This is kind of creepy back here. So we're like on the other side of the ballroom right now. You know, we left the uh, equipment over next to the uh, stairs going downstairs. So we're just gonna give them their space. See maybe if that's what they, what they want. What is that? I think I hear someone talking. Hello? Thought I just heard someone talking over here. Dave and I are here stag, so if anyone uh like someone to dance with, we'd be uh, definitely interested. Not saying we know how to dance, but definitely give it a shot. Hello, if there's anyone down here with us, my name is Jason, this is my friend Ryan. What's your name? This is a beautiful opera house. It is, yeah. It's a totally different feeling when we were coming up here. Oh yeah, it was. Kind of felt like we interrupted something. That's right, maybe. If we interrupted your party and you want us to leave, would you please stand at the top of the steps next to that device on the floor that has the red light? Or just stand, stand at the top of the steps if you would. standing up right now. I can too. Is that it? Do you want us to leave? We have no way of hearing you. 
Well, if you go close to the top of the steps where we have some items, and if you touch either one of them or just say go, in that general area, we'll, we should be able to hear you. Okay. There was just movement upstairs. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. It came from actually where the theater would be. Came from like above me, but back a little bit. There's no one out there in that part of the theater. If there is anybody up here with us, if you... Who was that? I have no idea. Those are there next to you. It sound, did that sound like a laugh or something? I thought it sounded like someone like tiptoeing on the floor. Is that you? So, to... What's that? I don't know. Downstairs? I don't know what that was. Hello? Wow. Those are there by the window. You know, if you're in here with us, we actually, we can't see you because to us, you've already passed on. Does that make sense? I can hear you downstairs. You're more than welcome to walk up here and talk with us. You can hear us. Come on in and join Ryan and I. Give us a sound. Let us know that you're here right with us. What was that? I heard what sounded like a voice. Yeah. That came from way back behind me. Yeah, that was directly behind you. It sounded female. Yeah. Hello over there. Oh. Oh. Is the temperature change, isn't it? What's the temperature? I'm not sure, but I've got cold chills so bad. See, that's how we know that you're here. This little red light. Now you're making it blink. That's awesome. Thank you. That's awesome. Yeah. Is it showing up on there? Guys, I don't know if you can see it or not, but the, the REM pod is, is flashing. Maybe. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah. I have to zoom in on it. So I was trying to, if I hold it there, zoom in up, I can hold the dead light. 
Cut that away. Any? Oh yeah, that makes sense. You should be able to see it. There's a lot of chairs down here. Could you go over there and sit with Jason? Who's up there? You just kind of startled us, that's all. Whoa. What was that? Did you hear it? I heard something. It was like movement in the dirt it was definitely down here with us because it wasn't on the wood upstairs it was movement on the dirt over here who's back here whoa whoa try not to hit my head Whoa. Every hair on my body just stood up. Probably over there with you. And I just heard movement on the dirt back here. Whoa. It was right above your head. Dude. Oh, that just gave me the chills. Whoa. Whoa. You can get as close as you'd like to us. We'd love to hear you. Love to hear you speak or make a noise. I just, I want to make a note real quick that the whole time that we've been up here, yeah. that has not, it has not done that. It's, it's on now constantly. There we go. All right, let's take a step back, give it some room. Oh, Just building itself up. Yeah, there's definitely an energy over here. And it's colder, a lot colder standing over here. Like probably 15 degrees difference. Wow. I wish we had Steve has the EDI upstairs or else I would confirm that with the ambient, but. So if you want to leave us your name or. And then we heard the noise. Oh wait, K2's going off beside you. I just hey, saw it split. My name's Jason, what's your name? But it is just lighting up to the second light there. Not much of a fluctuation, but it was weird because it hasn't changed this whole time, I don't think. Do you see those lights flashing? If you get real close to it, there'll be more lights light up for you. It's okay for you if you want to play with it.
I know I was hearing something move down here. Yeah. I was hearing before. Yeah, I don't know what that was. We just set up the REM pod here and it's actually starting to go off. Um, literally just set it up here on the stage. Could you step away for us? EVP session, all four of us. Jason, that the other camera's down here on the floor. Yeah. You wanted to grab it. He literally set it down and walk away. Right down here in the front right behind Steve on the floor. Mm -hmm. Could you step away please? And mind you, right where Ryan is standing is as far as he walked away yeah. from the red block before it went off. Could you please step away from it? The recorder. Put it over there. Yep, just making sure you know where it's at. Okay, we're gonna reset it. Set, make sure it's, it's still on. And you see that it is still on now. I zeroed it out. That's odd. If whoever set off the rim pod on the stage is still here with us. Could you do that again? There's also a device right over there on the stairs. If you walk up to it, it'll go off and we'll know that you're here. Steve's turning on the pedal box and the pedal box is just the PSB7 spirit box filtered through pedals to filter out the white noise of the sweeping, so all we'll hear are the voices coming through. And the voices coming through are only as clear as the voices that would come through the spirit box. As you all know, when you operate a spirit box, a lot of times, or sometimes, the voices that come through aren't always clear. So you're gonna have the same issue with the pedal box but it's the voices that do come through that are clear and that we can understand that we're going to try and use to make communication. So Steve's holding a device in his hand. If you walk over to him and talk, we might be able to hear your voice. Are you here with us? Is your name Victoria? What was that? Yeah, did you hear that? Did you hear that? It sounded like humming. Did you yeah, hear that? I, I heard that up here. What was that? Yeah, did you hear that? What was that? Yeah, did you hear that? It was high pitched. Yeah, yeah. It sounded like it came from up there by you, Jason. You didn't hear it? I mean, how loud was it, Jason? Uh, sounded like it was to my left. Someone up here in the balcony? What was that? 
Yeah, did you hear that? You can also go stand in the center of the stage and put on a show for us if you'd like. That's weird. Yeah. That has not had any voices come through until just now. Sound like a female. Victoria? That was definitely feminine. Yeah. Victoria, is that you? Ooh, yeah, the hair is really standing up now. Can you talk through it? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Can you tell us your name? We can tell you ours. My name's Ryan. I'm Steve. I'm Dave. And I'm Jason. Whoa. What? I just saw a shadow right over here by this. Is that doorway? To the right of it, right by this window. Dude, that's that doorway when we were doing the interviews that I felt so, like, that's just, like pulled towards. I know. It wasn't like an apparition, but it was like um disruption. Like it was kind of like if somebody had just been going like that. Strange. Huh. Can you come and talk to us, please? Whoa, I heard that. This is your theater, but we'd just like to speak with you. Charlie, if you're here, come on out. Now's your time. Come on out. Charlie, are you near me? EDI. EDI just went off. Come on out. Come on out. Are you affecting one of us? Where'd he go? Here, he's right there. In the doorway down here. <laughs> Come on out and talk to us now. Ever since I moved out from where I was staying, I feel a little bit better, but... Right here? Mm -hmm. Instant chills. Chill back here. I don't feel like that at all. Do you guys want to move to somewhere new while we have a few minutes? I think we should go up into the catwalk. Okay. There's a ladder that we're running. Okay, here we go. Whoa. What? Well, I got EMF on the. EDI just went off. That was weird. Oh, oh there it is. There's nothing there. It's a brick wall. Who's doing that? What's your name? just carrying it under my arm. Just started to spike. Can you walk up to it again for me? That was down there, did you hear that? I did. It was down there on the stage. Yeah. Who's down there? Whoa. That was definite movement. Who's down there? Who's down there? Who's down there? 
Whoa. I think we did. Oh, yeah, it's in the center stage, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I uh, either need to get by you or I'm about to have a panic attack standing here. What the f Hello? Did something fall down that hole like a piece of no. or something? No, no, that wasn't. I'm just asking to make sure. Ooh. Who's down there? What the hell was that? That was f <laughs> crazy. That was awesome. I mean, that camera should have picked up whatever it was. <laughs> Cause I had that camera set up right here. Yeah. Even if it was something that dropped from up here, that was like, boom, boom, boom. What was that? What the f Hello? What was that? What the f Hello? I was only asking to cover bases. Ooh, I've got chills. No, you're good, man. We were just shocked, that's all. That was Where? downstairs. You guys want I got EMF in my hand right here. Hello, is that you? Can you get closer to me? Make that light up more? Whoa. That's weird. Can you make it light up to the second light, please? Use his energy. Use all of our energy, whatever it takes. Charlie, is that you? Or is this someone else? Are you standing right here? Ooh, I got goosebumps all over me. Ooh. Can you take a step back? Away from me, please. I'm not trying to command you around. I'm not trying to give you orders. I'm just asking so we know that it's you. Is there a conduit right there? No, I can't tell. Oh, whoa. what was that? That was down there. Guys, temperature dropped too, just went off. Okay, it's whatever it is. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. I wonder what that was. It sounded small. There it was again. Yeah. This thing isn't about to like collapse, is it? No. That's not what we're hearing. But I do want to get off what this. What was that? Did you hear that? That was down on the stage, it was like thump. Did you hear it, Steve? Yeah. Who's down there? Carla said she had an experience up here where Charlie, or someone, had a black mass fly up right in front of her. Can you do that, please? We should probably start packing up in like five minutes. Well, here's the thing. What if we left, the three of us, go start breaking down and Jason can stay up here by himself for a few minutes? If he wants to. Yeah, you can do a bit. Yeah, it's fine with me. Okay. With the pedal box running? You don't have no. to. Okay, because I was going to say, I, I have a hard time. No, you don't Guys, my that. adrenaline, that was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whoa, I mean, for real, whoa, whoa, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want to go see twice. Okay.
Okay. Hello, Elizabeth. My name is Jason. I would love to get to meet with you briefly and talk with you real quick. Got a bunch of nice little toys over here to play around with. Do you enjoy this spot up on the catwalk? Do you like to make noises? You know, kind of like Would you like like to make a sound for me? Heard a knock. I think it may have been down. Sounded like maybe on the stage. Heard a knock. Well, thank you for that. I'm going to have to get ready to go soon. Thank you for spending time with us and, and communicating. Rolling. All right, so we are getting ready to leave the Twin City Opera House. Jason just got done by himself up in the catwalk, but we're going to walk over here. I brought a flashlight this time. We're going to walk over here and see if we can see what made that sound, that strange, loud sound when we were all up there. What was that? What the f Hello? If it was something that fell, it would have fallen down the ladder. Which is right over here at the top of these steps. Okay, so. All this was here earlier. All this was here earlier? Yeah, I just went up there. Everything right here is. Yeah. Okay. Man, I don't see. Mm -mm. No. <laughs> No. There's nothing up here. No. No, and it was at least three or four different times you could hear it impacting. Or some, you know. There's nothing up here. That is wild. There's literally nothing here. All right, so Jason. You came up here so that we could look at this clip. Now, when we were up in the catwalk of the Twin City Opera House, we heard one of the most bizarre noises that we've ever heard. It sounded like something heavy falling from up high and hitting the floor and bouncing multiple times. And it took us off guard. We were, we were pretty startled by it because we had absolutely no idea where this sound could have come from. Now, I watched through the action cam footage, which was the wide angle of what had happened and I actually found something and I brought you up here to show you Jason so yeah that really was crazy I remember you know as you said when we heard it the succession of noises it was like four or five of them in a row and it was so loud and it seemed to get louder and the first one sounded off and you acknowledge it we're all looking around and then here's a second and a third and a fourth and finally we're like what the hell, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was um, exhilarating. You know, that really, talk about getting the adrenaline going. I mean, just <laughs> even talking about it now, 
almost gets me just like, you know, in that moment, you know, yeah. excited. Yeah, it, it was palpable in the moment because it, it, it came out of nowhere and it took us off guard. But watch this clip here. So this is the wide angle, right? And at that point, you're already sitting down here. I think I had actually just set up the camera here. I'm off to the left-hand side of the frame. And uh, we'll just play through this here and I will show you what I'm looking at if you don't catch it. What was that? What the f Hello? Did something fall down that hole like a piece of No, or no, that wasn't. Oh, oh, just asking to make sure. Ooh. All right, so I want you to look right down here on the left hand bottom corner of frame. What do you see there? Okay, it looks like a brick. Yeah, this is a loose brick right here, but look right below that. It, it, it looks like a big ball. Okay. I don't know if you see that. It, it, mm -hmm. It's like a larger bouncy ball is what oh, it okay. looks like to me. Yeah, I see now, that. Now, watch Dave as he moves closer over to this side. So he walks over. Boom, there's the sound. What was that? Now, what do you notice? It's not there. It's not there. And what is there instead of the ball? Dave's foot. Dave's foot. Okay. <laughs> so do you get what I'm getting at here? Basically, I brought you up here to tell you that I debunked that noise and that Dave kicked that ball and kicked it over through that little, and it was so, it was a bouncy ball, so it bounced so far that it went somewhere where we couldn't find it because it had fallen straight down through. But that had to have been a heavy bouncy ball. It sounds very... Yeah, and it, it, it's bouncing on wood and the distance that it would have had to have fallen. Basically, I to me, it seems like Dave walked over, his foot kicked this ball, and it rolled just right to fall down through that trap door. And it fell straight down through, hit that wooden platform down below, bounced up and somewhere across the stage. And the area that we were looking around to try and find it was not where the ball bounced to because it's made out of that super bouncy material. It's, you know, a bouncy ball. It's, and I think that that was what caused that sound that we heard. Wow. Okay, well, hey. That's that's a game changer, but I mean, seeing it right here, like you said, it goes from, you can clearly see the ball there by the brick, and then as Dave moves over, it's gone, his foot is in the spot it was, and in the moment, Dave even said that he could feel he kicked a little something. Right. But in the moment, it's so loud, as you can hear, we were like, you know, no way, you know. Mm-hmm, yeah. And it, it, I think it's just one of those freak accidents because what are the chances that him moving over, because that trap door is only about three feet by three feet. You know, you have all that other space on the floor up there. What are the chances that that ball, when he kicked it, would have rolled straight to that trap door and gone down through there, you know? So I think that's why we were so startled by it in the moment because you think even if he did kick something, what are the chances that it would roll straight over there and fall down? But the trajectory, even though his IR extender moves and you can't see the ball as he kicks it, it's pretty obvious his foot is sitting right where the ball was. Right. So, unfortunately, as much as we want to say that this was paranormal, you have to look at the footage and you have to debunk, so. Jason, my apologies to you, sir, uh, to everybody for kicking that and, and not realizing it. Hey, well, just like Ryan said, you know, it's just a freak accident. And I mean, obviously it, it got a good distance on it. For, that looks like about three feet from where the ball originally was to get into the the hole there, you know? So yeah, that, uh, but in hindsight it's 2020 and it is good that to be able to see this or else we would have been deceived all along thinking that was actually, oh wow, you know, which, you know, hey, debunk. But like you said, you know, Still got some really, really awesome evidence there that night.